Thank you for staying with us. You're still on to the breakfast on Pulse TV Africa. It's time to see what the national dailies are saying this morning. And joining us to review the papers is Chris Kende Wandu. As a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, but he's joining us here from Lagos State. Good morning, sir. Happy New Year and welcome to the program. Good morning, sir. Happy New Year, my people, my people. Good morning. It's <laughs> nice to be here with you again. Yes, Happy New Year to you. Thank you for joining us. Um, okay, so today we're going to be starting with The Guardian. And I mean, we're just talking about this even, we're making a joke about this before we came on. And it says, the major headline here says, EFCC quizzes embattled edu others as anti-graft or pro heightens. So we know about the 585 million that was um, transferred to an in individual account by Beta Edo or the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. But now EFCC is, you know, quizzing them, which is what we expect. But it, are we going to see anything from this? Because I think this ministry has, has a, and has an antecedent, especially with the last uh, minister that was there. There were some monies that were um, siphoned and diverted. And now we're seeing a new minister again, who's the youngest minister here, still also sending money. We don't know what the money is for. We've heard that, you know, it followed due process and everything, but it was being sent to an individual account. Now, all of this, is this going to be something that might be swept under the carpet? Are they going to just, you know, do the glass boost? Um, let's see, let's see what's going on, let's make noise. And before you know it, it's being swept under the carpet, just like the former minister. Well, uh, first and foremost, let me state that um, um, I am not surprised with what is going on. Um, mm -hmm. This is what we've been saying uh, in the past few months and years, since the creation of the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry. And um, some of us have been um, saying it that that ministry is just a conduit pipe to um, steal money. And uh, when they started with the so-called distribution of um, cash and uh, transfer, whatever they call it, to uh, some so-called vulnerable Nigerians, without proper data to show for it, I knew that that was a scam. And we cried out during the Wari's um, government that this is just a scam that nobody listened. And um, so uh, the chicken is just coming home to roast now. And um, it's so annoying the, 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 uh, because of the fact that if you look at the three the people involved, the three trajectories uh, in this, are just three women, and there are three women, Sadia, the woman at Ipsa, and also Bethel do. And most of them are not. For those of us that have always cried out and said that, Women have been marginalized in governance, and there's need to give women a um, more prominent role in mm. government. This, to me, is, uh, I'm sure you're laughing, my sister. <laughs> this is a very good terrible. Yes, this is a terrible record. Then the third one is also the fact that we have always been in these trenches and asking for more uh, power, whatever, or um, some level of um, governance or leadership being given to the younger ones. Mm. That the older generation that monopolize um, the political system and leadership system, and as a week, remember that is why we fought for the not too young to mm. govern mm. or whatever, whatever that um, uh, that um, mm -hmm. was. Yes, not too young to run. Now we have a minister who is the youngest in the cabinet, just 36. 36 is just when some people are looking for their first job as graduates, and some of them have graduated up now. Somebody has risen to the position of a minister in one of the topmost, uh, one of the juicy ministry in the federal cabinet, and we we'll see what is happening. So it is quite annoying and disappointing. But um, I have to commend, I have to commend the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Tinubu seems to be surprising a lot of people because this, some of this thing happened in the last regime. Remember the Gwari and his style. Of governance, you can cry from the, you can cry the whole beach because if you you know my age, you will it's not even river. do anything. Mm -hmm. Yes, but this president has shown capacity for leadership. Uh, for some people that were so skeptical about his ability to be able to lead and leadership that, but you come to see that this is a listening president that seems to feel the input, the pulse of the people, and they act and acts as swiftly as possible. That's your question is now that the investigation is on and um, the, um, the the so-called 
transfer and fraud as it were being probed. It is now for us to see whether this probe will still go the same way the others before it. Because the, the problem with Nigerians is that Nigerians are very pessimistic when it comes to issues like this because they believe that the time and time again that such scandals came up, we made all the noise, yeah. within one week it died down, and we move on and see nothing happen. I hope that it will not go the same way. Today, the minister will be um, facing the EFCC. Yes. And um, from that, we'll get to know. But let me quickly add this. Not only the EFCC, the EFCC for me also has a question to answer it. Because if you look at this, you know that there is this, uh, um, uh, there is this law at the banking, within the banking system, that mm -hmm. if you are trans, uh, transacting more than 10 million naira through a bank account, that the bank is supposed to notify EFCC. Yeah. And reason for that. So, what, say, what I'm saying is, is it that the EFCC was not aware that such transfer has been done? Did the bank notify the graph agency of such transfer? On the banks involved. So, it's not just about Betty Edu now, but also all the apparatus and the Now, the post coming in also, just landing up on this, is that between in the past um, two years or three, that the ICPC as an organization also have been able, be able to um, meet in the board about 32 billion naira that was illegally transferred from Brazil. So it is a big chunk of this thing, but good enough, the president has started and he has even given some level of directive that um, the supervising minister, a uh, child of the economy, should not take a, a, a positive uh, a role in the affairs of that industry and try to reorganize it. But as far as I'm concerned, I am totally disappointed with Betty Edu and what she has done so far. Yeah, I, I am a woman and I would not lie. I am also quite disappointed because we've seen the likes of Deziani. Um, we've seen the likes of Sadia. We've seen these people actually come in and you're expecting so much from them because we've, it's, been a, it's been a saying that women are nurturers and when a woman, you know, hold the affairs of a nation, they're able to nurture, nurture the country and, you know, make sure that things are going well. So when you now see these women that you're expecting so much from, go there and make a mess of it. You know, well, it, maybe it's just a practical case of what a man can do, a woman can do. Oh, no. No, no, no. But it's quite, it's quite, it's quite disappointing yeah, because it's, now it's disappointing. you're well, just trifling now, I, the... I think we should give uh, better the benefit of the doubt. doubt because, I, no, but, so because the 34 billion was more or less he, her blowing the whistle on what is happening and then they now suddenly found out that you too you paid to a, a, an, an individual, individual account. account yes it's still very bad for monies government monies to be paid to individual accounts but we're looking at these uh, crimes individually and according to their weight yeah. far, as far as i'm concerned even though she ends up being sacked as a minister uh, but what was the level of her crime and yeah. what was the level of the other crime my my problem is the 44 billion we're not talking much about, about it anymore. anymore we're talking about the the 500 and something million mm. naira that so was what i'm even trying to highlight is the fact that we've seen women come into these positions and mm. you expect so much from them yeah. because they're saying you need to give women a seat at the table they're fighting for equality feminism as we'd like to say and so when they give you that opportunity what do you do with it and now when you go and you make a mess of it what that does you're you're and you're making sure that people don't even get the opportunity anymore because mm. there's already a stigma to it that oh women come and then they do they do what men can do if men have been stealing well just still be better. sure that women will steal better uh, women are going to like steal uh, bullion vans of things so <laughs> that is quite disappointing <laughs> and <laughs> like like you know you've rightly said let's just give better the benefit of the doubt and let's just hope that her crime is not you know trying to s siphon money out maybe there was just the mistake that's the benefit of the doubt we can give but uh, I mean, they are not she's also a, going orientation to, enough to yeah. know that this you cannot do that you yeah. cannot do because well, the career civil the, servants will know this and they will not advise. yeah Maybe. well she, she's she's going to the the efcc um office today yeah. so i think this is a developing story that we'll, we'll get to know more of in the few in a few days um okay so yeah Reps blame, House of Reps blame Agri Ministry for delay in sharing Tinubu's palliative. Just what is your take on that?
Na the woman why you give me on give me apple oh na the snake why you that's what is happening here the ref is blaming you know, ministry of agriculture yeah yeah the same thing also you know is the same level of corruption we are talking because everything is boiled down to corruption uh, the system is so corrupt that you don't even know where to start from um don't forget that the federal government released certain funds to st states i think about five billion each to each state uh, for palliatives but ask yourself how many of the states are able to distribute this palliative to pass it well I just came back from the village uh, for the Christmas and New Year, and I'll tell you that in the time, my entire local government, I never saw any single palliative, either rice, beans, gari, or whatever it is that was given to any single individual. And I asked myself, was the palliative not given to the people of Imo State as they were given? The only state I, state, I continue to say, the only state that seems to have a resemblance of what is needs to be done is Bono State, where the governor has been very, very effective in making sure that those palliatives uh, gets to all the vulnerables, uh, as it were. Um, so, I remember also a member of um, the House of Representatives came out to say that uh, each of them were given, uh, is it, was it four trucks or four trailers of rain out, um, rice or whatever, uh, in a viral video that was doing a bit. I think that has also been debunked in certain quarters. But the fact is that all these are scammed. And in, in, in state, they, they, by me to the issue of the humanitarian affairs, the most annoying part is, is that this money it was money meant for the vulnerable in the society. Money made for the poorest of the poor. Now the rich are the ones now stealing the same money that was meant for the poor. And it's like, in the past three, four years, it, is, it has been um, led, you know, it's not even an, an allegation. You look at the budget circuit that the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs have gotten a budget of about 2.1 trillion naira. Go and do the math and see how much has been pushed into that. But most of that money is uh, in, in individual pockets. So the issue of palliative is not working. I personally will feel that the, the Minister of Ministerial Affairs should be scrapped totally. Uh, that is my personal opinion. That ministry should be scrapped. It is not what you need. There's other ways and better ways of people to make sure that uh, some of these palliatives get to Nigerians better. But that Ministry of Palliative, uh, may I say, well, no, no, I can call it the Ministry of Palliative as it were. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, and the, you know what the, uh, the government have tried to do is try to place some level of support within it, believing that women have the capacity to be able to reach out to their fellow human beings. And uh, that is why that ministry, since it was established, have the, all the heads, the ministers have been women. No single man has been a, a minister of humanitarian affairs. So uh, it's quite unfortunate, but that is how we rule. Um, I still, I still, and I'm still saying that this may still go through it because you now ask yourself, Remember vividly the, the corruption scandal that involved the um, Auditor General of Nigeria. Mm. That is one. That stole over 100 and something billion naira. It was, uh, we saw the, new, uh, the, the uh, back and forth that happened. It was arrested by EFCC, blah, blah, blah. At the end of it, we had that it was big bargain. And it was a return of 41 billion or thereabout. The rest of the 60 something billion is in man's personal pocket. I was on a TV program a few days ago when somebody called in and said that, you know, that that man has been given uh, a chief city to somewhere in Spain, can, or he was the ban and the rest of that. But that is what happened. There you, you remember the one that happened at NDDC, the program at the NDDC, and uh, the shot of, of, of the mic, of the mic, mm -hmm. we saw what happened through. At the end of it all, nothing happened. The program of the power sector, where billions and billions of naira were sunk, what happened at the end of it all? Nothing. Quite recently, the former Minister of Power, um, Agunloye, uh, was arrested and um, accused of um, allegedly siphoning and um, investing billions and billions of naira. What happened after a few days? He was released on administrative bail. So that's and that's it. It is just after two, three days within the media. Watch it. By next week, you know Nigeria is one uh, one, one section one sectional. So, uh, sessional uh, story after the other. After this one, after this week, this one will die down. Next week, we mm. will uh, we'll take another one. And that is how we roll. And even we, the media, because I'm a journalist, we, the media, also just take off our eyes of this, um, of this um, uh, scandals and just let it go. After the initial frenzy, we'll be rest assured that from next week, we start having other headlines on the front pages of newspapers, on television stations like yours, news items, and the rest of them. Nobody is going back to ask the relevant questions. Of how did this go? And we move off as if nothing happened.
Mm. All right, let's move over to the power sector. Um, here, there's a small headline here that says NERC cancels Disco's license over 110 million Naira debt, yeah. appoints 110 billion Naira debt, appoints sole administrator. So this is talking about the Kaduna um, Disco, and they've been able to dissolve the board of directors, and they've appointed someone who's supposed to run the day-to-day -day affairs of the Disco. Um, yeah. are, we, are we going into privatization? Because that's, that's what I'm asking. Our power sector is, I don't want to say nothing to write home about, but the light is improving. We can say that. But it's still not where we need to be. Should we be looking at privatization? If you know the board of directors can actually be dissolved, the board can be dissolved, and then they put someone there who's supposed to be the chief executive officer, shouldn't that be something that we should explore? That sector of the power, the, 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 the power sector has been privatized, of course. It has been privatized. You know that um, really the government, um, the, um, the, uh, But the government still has a hand in it, sort of. Yes, yes, the government having a hand does not necessarily. The majority shareholders in, you know, we have, um, they are very, uh, uh, the very arms to that. That's the issue of generation. The generation is practically being done by the government, I think, uh, the Jenkos. Then there's the, the, the distribution. The distribution part is where the private sector came in. And that is why you have, you know, you have your Ikeja electric. You Eco have your Eco electric. Yes, you have the Eco, uh, uh, Where you are you is uh, Esco electric. Where I am is Ikeja electric. You have the Bini electric. Yeah. You have the Kaduna. You have the Abuja. It is privatization because individuals and companies bought, bought, bought over those things. But the problem was that, and the problem is this, that most of them that bought it didn't have the capacity to be able to mm. handle those sectors. And that has where the big problems They were not able to, it came in and couldn't push enough money into the system to be able to expand um, on that. That is one of those. Then on the generation, you know that generation, as I said, that's generation yes. and that's transmission. What the also problem is that we are generating at least a little higher than we are uh, we are distributing because the transmission lines cannot be able to take as much as the uh, the jungles are generating and that is where they cannot take it because if you are generating about six uh, six thousand uh, kilowatts or uh, whatever and the transmission lines can only take five what means is that you are losing over one thousand because you cannot push all that six to that because it will not be done. So by now, I thought that we would have been able to expand in the area of transmission. If we are able to do that, so that we can be able to take as much as possible from the generation that is there. And that is where the problem is. And because some of the news I've read is that most of even the um, uh, uh, these schools are not ready to take as much possible or to buy because they buy off, they buy off what is being generated and distribute and collect money from the final users like you and I. I know that some of them ran into problem. I think that was Abuja or is it the same Kaduna had issue at the point, and they were not able to pay back the money they borrowed from one of the banks, which I'm not going to mention. The bank took over. I know that one of the major banks in Nigeria took over one of the uh, one of the companies. I don't know whether it's that of Abuja or Kaduna, but somewhere in the north. Well, Kaduna, so they're the only 110 problem. billion, so that's obviously the that, reason that, why. Exactly, exactly. But you also have to ask yourself this question. If they also have done the what they ought to do, I'm talking about discourse now, by making sure that every house is metered. Maybe they would have been able to generate some of their incomes, but most of them depend solely on this, uh, what do we call it now? Um, estimated. The, when you are not metered. Yeah, uh, estimated. 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 Est yes, estimated billions because they feel that they get more than But because of doing that, they are losing so much. That is the second one. The third part is that so many, there are so many stolen, and I use the word stolen, quote and unquote, stolen uh, power. A lot of Nigerians don't, they don't pay their bills. They uh, illegally uh, just put on their power. That is why you go to some houses, you see, you see the fact that despite some people have meters, you see that their air, air condition is connected directly and is not even on the meters. So energy, uh, st stolen energy is also a problem. So we need to have a holistic look at the power sector and look at where the problem is coming and see how we can do it. But the most annoying part is that we are not generating and distributing more than 5,000 yeah, in a country of 520 million people. 
whenever you say, whenever you say, whenever you say uh, privatization, everybody thinks about what has happened in the telecom. Yeah. If it's working in the telecom, and if it is not working in the power, must we continue? Because if it's not working, there's no, there's no need privatizing it. If it is not working, then some other things should be done. The, 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 the way to go is privatization. I think so. Yeah, so what is it that they do? Yeah, privatization. No privatization. No privatization no, because no, the, the fact that the government still has a hand, you, you know, get is still who do not even have the expertise, who do not have the means to to but, make it work. That that is, these things because that is, politically. That's what exactly I'm saying. That's the problem I say. If the government is taking its hands off of palace, totally. it should privatize everything yes. and let okay. people that can't have to go where we that to be able to come and do it and run it the way they, they will do. You saw what happened, just as you rightly mentioned, my brother, you saw what happened with the telecom set. Where in those days we used to go to Nitel to and Q to make calls, mm -hmm. we cannot run to bed. When the GSM companies came in, you saw what happened. Mm -hmm. Even within the, uh, if you are even talking about the, 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 what happened to the uh, uh, oil sector. You forgot that the government said that it removed his hand on the issue of petroleum, that it is not a free for all, you can be able to at the end of it, you see that LNPC will still come and say that it is pecking the price of petroleum. It has removed subsidy. It, has not really, it will pay the price of a liter to 600. And you say that you have privatized uh, that sector. If you privatize it, is it not for the, uh, for the oil marketers or whatever to not determine the cost of petroleum? Instead of you um, dumping. So that is the, that is the, uh, uh, that is the summer sort, uh, economic summer sort, uh, uh, sort, summer sort of we see in the country. God may come out speaking from both sides of his mouth at the end of it, or nothing seems to be happening. But what I was going into is that when we are doing about 5,000 uh, megawatts as a sphere, a country like South Africa in the United States is doing about 40,000, 50,000. You can see that we've not started it at all. We've not even there. And I continue to ask, what is the problem that we cannot be able to solve in the past? Over after over 60 years of Nigeria independence. What is so special about it? One of the ministers came one time, long time ago, to say that ah, there are some wishes, wishes within that uh, sector, and I was saying, which, what kind of wishes? Somebody came, like the minister, uh, one of the ministers, um, but like he came in to see, try to put some kind of measures in place to have he was killed, and that was it. So, there must be, until the government has the political will to be able to resolve the power, the problem of power, we will continue to go. And every economic development within our system is tied to power. Solve the issue of power, and you see the economic growth. The SMEs, We'll be able to grow. The SMEs are practically dead now. There is no the, the companies are moving out. The big companies are moving out of Nigeria in droves because the issue of power, the ease of doing business, is not there. You go and see how much a, 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 a liter of diesel is being sold, and you can end of it, you are going to realize, of course, the diesel in Nigeria doesn't make any sense. Rather move to Ghana, Togo, or even uh, Benin, rather remaining in Nigeria. Mm. All right, let's look at the daily trust. Um, it seems it seems government uh, is the only one seeing uh, the good works of Melekiari mm. because Nigerians. Uh, the advert, I do. We can every newspaper carrying, carrying the, the bold photograph of Melekiari uh, from and the, government the, the one from Tom Polo as well. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's saying that um, he has done a fantastic job. Well, I, I don't know. Do you? Uh, are you also? Well, we wish him happy birthday. Definitely. First, first, first we wish him happy birthday. Uh, but newspapers not even having head, headlines today and just putting the, the picture of Mele Kari, I don't know how that is. You go to From the daily trust, trust there, to the nation. You know, um, everybody. Yeah. Is psychopathy and patronage. Is psychopathy and patronage. Is psychopathy and patronage. If you are in the um, uh, Tokolo's um, position, won't you do the same? We are giving contracts of billions and billions of naira mm. um, by the NMPC and the federal government to man the pipelines and also uh, the, the guy has. This was a, I, I thought I uh, would buy over the whole newspaper, not even <laughs> the front pages. So that, <laughs> that, that we would, so that we not even see the mass head. But uh, <laughs> it, it, it's political uh, patronage, so I don't see anything. He's the one seeing what, is, uh, what he has seen in uh, Cari. Most people believe that America is, I don't believe he's, he's performing. Uh, left to me, I, I personally would have thought that America would have been sacked, just like so many other CEOs, because he, he has, been, for me, he has been a problem within the uh, oil sector. If we can move the kind of problem we're having now within the sector, as I said, I just came back from the Southeast, 
and I know how much I spent on fuel to fuel my vehicle uh, from um, from the east to this. Oh, I don't even want to mention it. So um, the petroleum sector, the oil, uh, uh, oil and gas sector, to me, doesn't seem to be working. And uh, we are talking of the proof of the, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. The day we throw the searchlight on NNPC, mm. the day the federal government have the power, political will, to be able to throw the satellite on NNPC and Minister of Petroleum Affairs, most this government government will collapse. Um, I will tell you. So many people that had their fingers, we, we have their fingers burnt. I don't know why we're not throwing satellite. We are just running. Well, the, the president, the president, the minister, and the president is not being. How do you throw the light on, on the petroleum sector when the presidents are the ministers? You know, Buhari was a minister of yeah. petroleum resources, and the present president, uh, we don't find any minister for petroleum apart from himself. So, how do you throw the such light on them? A lot that of is what I'm saying. Sold. No, so I say, well, until we have the, they have the political way to be able to do that, then what is happening within this? Is it so much, so much rot? Because you ask yourself, is it the same petroleum ministry that they have in Saudi, that they have in Saudi Arabia, they have in Qatar, mm -hmm. they have in certain other countries? And you see, the, go to Dubai. Dubai, Dubai doesn't have much of even petroleum um, oil, but as well they go, they go and see the level of um, development in that country. Go to Saudi Arabia. Go to so many other countries. Our fellow OPEC um, oil producing countries, OPEC. I'm talking of Venezuela and all those other uh, corrupt countries. If you understand what I mean. They look at the major uh, countries that um, that you really not take and go and see the level of development within their country and compare that. Go and see for yourself and if there's any of them that produces crude oil, export crude oil, export crude oil and import. From the rot within the system, they are benefiting from the rot of the within the system. For every single liter of fuel that is imported into Nigeria, look, they are having a cut. Good enough, this current government is trying to do something uh, meaningful by making sure mm. so that they are reviving the uh, refineries. We have the protocol refineries in the next few days. We start production and we hope that will happen in Warwick and Kaduna. But the one within the Minister of Petroleum and the NBC, um, especially, <laughs> is mind boggling mm. if we start moving that sector. <laughs> well, even the World Bank has said that NNPC is not being transparent, so yeah. Let's move over to some security matters. Um, on Daily Trust, it says bandits return to Kaduna Abuja Highway, abduct 30, and they block the road for about 45 minutes. I think I'm quite tired yes, of, I know. of um, this whole banditry. We're seeing things like this happen. People are making distress calls when um, terrorists even come into their villages. And like now, you know, the highway is being blocked and people are being abducted. Your life is not even safe here in Nigeria. And the government is not even doing anything. Or we are not, maybe they are, but we're not even seeing anything that, that's tangible that they're doing. Please, I want to know your thoughts on this. The fact that bandits have returned, and so it's not the first time, for the headline to say return to Kaduna. I, I think there was a time they actually abducted people on a train. Mm -hmm. Now they're on the highway and they've been able to abduct 30 people. They blocked the road for a whole 45 minutes. Nothing was being done. Nobody came to their rescue and they were being abducted. So please, I want to know your thoughts on this. You know, I said the issue, I said something about the issue of uh, one week, one headline. Mm. Have you forgotten what happened in Plateau State? Have you, do you know exactly. that you forgotten what happened in Plateau State? And then Kaduna. And Kaduna too. Uh, yeah. you, we forgot to it. The massacre that happened there, we are moving on and said nothing happened. Nobody has proved what happened. No uh, arrests have been made of anybody that uh, participated in that in that massacre in Plateau State and Kaduna. Now we are moving to the next one that uh, bandits have returned. Is it today that they are returning? Go to you go, not only the Oskaduna, even the Abuja Lokoja um, Express um, way, um, bandits have returned and they are kidnapping and these are the ones that are that were reported. For every single report you have of abduction of uh, human beings and bandits, you can rest assured that over 50 or even 90 um, percent were unreported. Mm. So, um, at the point, Kaduna uh, Abuja, as it became, a no-go area, which was why the government 
uh, in his wisdom, tried to revive the Kaduna Abuja rail uh, railway system so that people who are retired, who can't find their way through the road will go by train. But what happened within some months, the uh, Abuja um, uh, Kaduna railway uh, rail was attacked, and um, I don't know whether they've resumed. Uh, uh, Operations. Um, also evacuated yes, because for a long time they wanted to revive it and some security issues. We are going to put some drones on the way and rest of them. But the fact is that um, bandits have returned to that route. And it's a very, very uh, popular route which, um, that is linking the FCT and some other parts of um, this. So I hope the police, um, uh, the IG, IGP, is aware of what is happening. The chief of army staff, the chief of defense staff, and all the security agencies um, are aware now. I show now that the newspapers are reporting that these guys are bad, and uh, something will be done because uh, it took a long time for everybody to clear that as is and uh, stop them from what they are doing. But it seems that we have dropped the ball and we remove our eyes from that highway, and these bandits and criminals have taken advantage of the situation and now uh, are back. And I will still say it time and time again. You see, most of our security, if you drive from Lagos to Shagamu, to Benin, to Onish, through Asaba, to Onisha, and you see the number of police, very annoying, see the number of police checkpoints on this on this route, and you continue to ask yourself, what are these policemen doing? Because you continue to see the level of uh, insecurity on that route and how people are being picked. But what do they do? You see them collecting money, yes. collecting uh, 100 naira, 200 naira from. Even not only not only from uh, um, um, transport companies now, even private, and even the worst part of it is that the military have joined. You see, in military checkpoints manned by soldiers, and I'm saying this with all sense of humility, that you see military checkpoints. But in those days, you can never see a, a military man try to collect anything for. But you see them on that as and I told you, I went to that as almost about twelve hours drive. From my state of Hino to Lagos. And I saw even military checkpoints where the military were collecting money from transporters and from individuals. I ask yourself what is happening. Because when you do that, even some of the people you think you are collecting you are collecting money for could be criminals. Some of the people that are in those vehicles might be kidnapped uh, kidnapped victims. Somebody might give you two hundred naira and just let go. So I think that and the most annoying part is that every successful IGP that comes, the first thing he says that no more roadblock. No more roadblock. Remove all roadblock. We will ban it. The second one is that I'm going to remove policemen from VIPs and the rest of them after yeah. one week. They do that is the end of it. Again. They are back. Exactly. They are back to their state. It's a, it, it, the level of corruption, I, I still try this again to corruption. If we're able to tackle the issue of corruption, then most of this, but the fact is that um, this issue is being raised now that the Kaduna um, Abuja Expressway. Is a, experiencing a lot of banditry and kidnapping, and I hope that our security agencies are. But good enough, good enough, the police yesterday started the recruitment of another 30,000 policemen uh, into the uh, system. And I hope that by the time we recruit about 30 more thousand, that might, to a large, a large extent, um, be able to aid the level of insecurity uh, in the land. But that is still too short for um, having close to about just about 400,000 policemen policing over 200 million Nigeria. Don't forget, the primary role of the police is internal security. So that the military had nothing by the constitution, by the uh, uh, by the provisions of Nigerian constitution, the military had nothing to do with internal security. Theirs is to guide and protect Nigeria or the country from external aggression. But because the police are finding it difficult to be able to cope with because of their number and the rest of them, that is why you have the military in the mix. And most of them are also becoming part of the security system, part of the agitation, and part of the problem that we're having. And that is why we said there is a need for us to also take it further with the state policing. We saw what Amateko have done in the south, mm -hmm. uh, southwest. If that can be extended to other parts of the country, that would be another uh, um, help, helping up uh, within our, uh, with our security agitation. But as it's here, we have so much security, security going on across the land. Yeah, so well, there was something, there was something, there's a joke I usually make with my brother. And I told him, I said, if you're being kidnapped in an SUV, a very fine SUV, guess what? Nobody will find you. Because the police yeah. people, 
they don't they they will take bribe from you know smaller cars and then when they see like a a big car maybe they'll just take the money from you they never search they never check so if you're at the back you know of the truck nobody will find you and that's where our security system has got into now another question i want to ask the fact that the, the government is not tackling you know this insecurity this banditry and all of that do you think it gives them more power for them to be able to operate the government is tackling the um, uh, insecurity but what we have to say are they doing as much as they ought to do the gun are the days where you just Think that by issuing a gun and uh, using a uh, uh, jet um, to bomb all over the world, government invests in intelligence. Intelligence gathering has become a part of um, security. Intelligence gathering will be able to give you the necessary information. And for you to gather in, in intelligence information, you also have to build some level of trust. There must be a trust between you and the people because you cannot be everywhere. It is the people that will give the security agencies information and so so, 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 Because these criminals live among us. Our people know them. They, are, they don't drop from the sky. Mm. They know where they are. But part of the problem is what I call the, 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 the trust deficit between the citizens and the security agencies because they believe that when they give you certain information, that information will be traced back to you and those people that you reported will also come back and be able to harm you. So we need to be mm. a high level of trust. There must be a high level of trust between the citizens and the security agencies so that people can be able to volunteer. And I've said time this time and time again. If you go to advanced school, let's say for London, if you go to some part of London and maybe some suburb and rest of them, and you are walking past, and somebody, you'll be shocked that an old woman sitting by her window is looking at this face, and this face is not familiar in my area. The next thing she will do is to call the police. True. There's somebody I'm seeing here. I don't know the face. Police will raise down and be able to do some certain checks. And you can never know that is that old 70, 80 year old woman that was sitting at the window that was able to alert the police. That information cannot be traced to her. So there's that kind of confidence for them to release the information and also. Tell. But can you do that here? There are instances where people report to the security agencies and when you go to the station, the person that you reported is standing there and pointing at you. Okay, say now you have to go see when we see. And that kind of thing. So, most often that no. yes. 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 so people get to an robbery scene or get this thing, go and report to police. The police will arrest you. Yeah. They will say you see a dead body, you go and report to police, they will arrest you and say, How do you kill them? <laughs> Why you take his cell? So people just people don't even render help again. If you see somebody being attacked on their spread and see them waving, you don't even know whether if you give the person a right whether the person is a, is a victim or part of the system, or whether at the end of it, your police is going to arrest you for people. So that is what I'm talking about, the trust deficit. And we're able to close that gun. So it's not just issuing gun, AK-47, and go and shoot, go and do it. Ask yourself, how many times have you called a police station, a police station that there's a robbery attack somewhere and they'll come? The first thing they'll tell you, they don't have a vehicle. I just think that uh, this recruitment that is being done, they're doing the due diligence uh, so that they don't get to employ or recruit people who are already bandits who are mm. looking for cheap gun to use and do all their nefarious activities. I do hope that they will do all the background checks. I'm worried because we don't have data in this country. Yeah. Intelligence is poor yeah. and everything. So how do they find out? that these people are not already members of Boko Haram or bandits of some sort and all that, and they're just employing them. Well, let's hope well, that this yeah, is how it's yeah. going to end. I mean, it's um, something you also touched on, which was a trust deficit. I remember when I was much younger, um, when the TV comes on in the evening, you see most, want, uh, most wanted, mm. like the, 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 their, their faces, their pictures of people, then they're saying these are the people that are most wanted. And so if you have any information about them, you can call. But now you don't even see that. And even if someone was on my TV screen as most wanted, I'm not sure I want to call because I'm scared that something might happen to me. So, yeah, I, I agree. We need to be able to start to trust. There should be that trust between the government, the, the security agencies, and the people. And that way we can all fight this insecurity together. Security. Yes. But this is where we wrap it up on this segment. Thank you so much for coming and reviewing the papers with us. Thank you so much, Mr. Chris. Thank you very much. We'll do more this year in Jesus' name. Amen Have a wonderful day. So we are waiting for our
right we've been speaking with chris kende wandu and he's a member of the chartered institute of arbitrators in the uk but he was joining us here from lagos state we'll go on a quick break and when we return we'll be looking at our hot topic stay with us <laughs>